So this is a video to try to help explain some expectations related to criterion B. Your first criterion B lab report of the year is to plan out your investigation into a factor affecting the rate of reaction. The reaction we're looking at is calcium carbonate reacting with hydro hydrochloric acid. The main product that we're concerned with is the production of carbon dioxide gas and you're gonna be capturing that gas in a flask and using a pressure probe to measure, measure the pressure change over time. Your group should have one of the variables, either you're changing the temperature of the hydrochloric acid, the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, or the surface area of the calcium carbonate. Now, uh, this is the handout that you have and it outlines the Criterion B lab report expectations, um, Criterion C, which is not, we don't have to worry about yet. This is kind of a, a fill in the blank kind of uh, planner that could help you write your report. But I'm gonna quickly look at uh, an exemplar that's for a different uh, lab just to show you what this might look like. <clears throat> so criterion B1 has to do with outlining the aim or the research question that you're trying to answer, uh, your hypothesis and the explanation of your hypothesis. Now, this actually isn't a very good research question, this exemplar that we've chosen. How does the external environment affect the structure of cells? Um, you know, this external environment is way too vague for this lab. If you look down at what the aim is, it says the aim is to, to determine how the change of the salt solution volume uh, affects the internal size and area of the onion cell. So this is really a biology lab. It's about uh, the sizes of cells, but the aim is much better at expressing what this lab is about than the topic question. Um, and in your lab, I think it's best if you express it as a question. But you can see here that they've clearly identified in their aim, the independent variable has been clearly uh, described, the change in the salt solution volume. So they didn't just say volume, they expressed that they're talking about a salt solution and that that's what they're going to change, their independent variable. And they wanna see its effect on the internal size and they've specified we're talking about area of the onion cell. So this internal area is the dependent variable. So they've described that. Uh, I think they should include, they could include the units here. So it might be like uh, square millimeters or something like that. Um, and they've included uh, a little important detail that we're looking at onion cells as opposed to just any type of cell. So by including uh, nice extra detail, that helps clarify what the aim of this investigation is and it helps focus it. So I also like to include things like if they're testing this independent variable, they could include the range of values that they're going to test. So from two milliliters to 10 milliliters is our range. Um, then we're gonna measure the internal area. They might wanna say how they're going to do that. Like in this one, they're probably using the DynaLite cameras and the Dynascope and DynaLite software to actually um, do the measurements. So in your lab, you should probably mention something about how you're measuring the rate of reaction, um, that you're using pressure probes, what the units of uh, rate of reaction will be, what kind of software you're gonna use. Uh, those types of details can really help focus the aim of the investigation. Now they've made a prediction. They think that as uh, the volume of the salt solution increases, the internal uh, cell size will decrease. They've even mentioned a type of relationship that they predict. Now that might be hard for you to do, but you can still try to suggest one. If you think it will be a linear relationship or an exponential relationship, you can try that. But most important is that you talk the, the right kind of relationship in terms of as the something increases about your independent variable, what do you predict will happen to your dependent variable? Will, will it increase? Will it decrease? And then they're gonna back up that explanation, their hypothesis with an explanation. And that explanation is gonna include scientific vocabulary and scientific concepts that are clearly laid out uh, and explained. And so in B1, you're gonna get marked on, is your aim or research question clear and focused and does it include all the important details, independent variable, dependent variable? Do you make a logical hypothesis based on the concepts and do you outline the concepts clearly? So actually using scientific language, uh, following through your, your explanation should be in a nice, logical, clear order. You don't need lots of extra writing. It doesn't need to be that long. Maybe even one paragraph could be enough, but you should fully explain your prediction using 
the correct scientific concepts. For reaction rate, you need to explain uh, what your independent variable is. So what is temperature? What is concentration? What is surface area? Explain that first and then talk about collision theory and explain why your independent variable would have a, an impact on, a deep, on your dependent variable, your rate of reaction, and explain that using correct vocabulary. The next parts of the lab are really just outlining method. Uh, you can see they first uh, identified their independent variable, their dependent variable, and a number of control variables, in this case, four different control variables. So they identified them first, that's nice. And then they split it up into a section about, here's the independent variable. Again, you don't really need this table, I suppose, if you're going to identify it again below. They've listed the values that they're going to aim for with their independent variable. And then they've explained the method of how they will achieve those values. Notice they've listed the, the equipment that they're going to use by a specific name, and they've described the method here. Then they move on to the dependent variable. They talk about uh, what it is and their method, and then they outline one, two, three, four, five, seven steps for how they will actually go about measuring that dependent variable. Um, one thing that they didn't do, which they should do, is they should mention the number of repeated trials. At least I don't see it here upon quick glance. So that's something that's missing here. And then for each control variable, they identify it again. They talk about uh, how they're going to set up that control variable and how they're going to keep it consistent. And they also give some explanation about why it's important to keep it controlled. So this is the, the what they're controlling. This is the how they're controlling it. And this is the why they are controlling it. And you'll see that they do that for each control variable. And that's the criterion B, then it's done. So part one is you're outlining the point of the investigation, your prediction, and the scientific concepts to back up your prediction. And then B2 and B3 are really all about your method and how well you explain your method, but it has to be broken down into these parts, the independent variable method, the dependent variable method, or identification and method, and then the control variables and method is strand B3. So this is B2, independent and dependent, and this whole part here was B1. So I hope this video clarified a bit of the expectations for criterion B. This exemplar is in your handout. Uh, good luck.